or if you are a student who is also scared of MCQ, keep the entire section A, leave one or two pages of your answer sheet because it will stretch your answer sheet to an extent where the evaluator might feel, oh my god, what is this? There are so many pages to correct, right? So, <clears throat> you can see the lines should not ex uh, exceed these. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to PW English. This is Chaitra, your partner teacher. In today's session, let us see how well. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to PW English. This is Chaitra, your partner teacher. In today's session, let us see how well can you score in biology using the tips that I would be giving you. Now, it is no rocket science that it is easy to score well in most of your board examinations. It is just that we are scared, so we have a mental block. You will have to very practically follow certain tips. Uh, don't be emotional about I am scared, I am uh, anxious, I cannot remember whatever I have studied. What you have to do, you have to study, let these doubts come. It will come naturally, you cannot avoid it completely. But then let the thoughts come and go. Let it not make home in your mind. Because in that case, you will be carrying the burden of all of these emotions into your examination hall, which might lead you to forget the topics that you have already studied and you are actually good in. So, I will give you a few practical tips and tricks. But I think this is pretty much covered. But it is more like an assertion. I am reassuring you of what you already know. So let us start how to score well in biology. Now biology is a theoretical subject and I am sure all of you are aware of the question paper pattern. You know that section A has 16 questions of which you have multiple choice questions as well as you have assertion and reason also. Most of the students go wrong in assertion and reason types of questions. What you can do if it is scaring you, you can keep assertion and reasons to be answered at the end of the paper. So that you are done with all the theory questions in the sense where they are asking you a question and you will put, put down an answer. That is the most easiest form of question answering session because you have been trained up until um, uh, most of your examination from your lower classes to answer in that format, right? So you can keep a session and reason for the end of it. Or if you are a student who is also scared of MCQ, keep the entire section A, leave one or two pages of your answer sheet Start with the third page so that you finish all the long answer, short answer type of questions and then you come to section A which is a non-negotiable and no choice kind of a section. In section B, you will be given 5 questions and per question 2 marks. So, total of 10 questions you will have 10 marks you will get from section B. Section 7, uh, C sorry has 7 questions. 3 marks per question and total marks 21, section D 2, uh, questions per mark is 4 and total marks is 8 and section E has 3 questions, questions per mark is 5 and total questions are 15. This is going to be a long answer kind of question. Case based question, uh, case based questions are uh, those where you will have to think a little bit, they would have given you a certain kind of a graph or certain kind of an incident, certain kind of a, an experiment from which you have to draw conclusion. Do not get scared of this. Don't worry about this. This is exactly based on what you have studied. Nothing that you have not studied will come. Remember that. Whatever you have studied only from that, they will be creating questions. So, you should not get scared. What if I am not able to answer? Of course, you will get scared. But what if I am not able to answer? So you can tell yourself, no, I think I can manage. I will be able to manage. Tell this to yourself repeatedly. So that by the time examination comes, you are at least in more positive space. So you will not be given any choices in section A. You will have to answer all the 16 questions in section B, C, D, E. Now in these sections also, they will not be giving you like 8 questions and answer any 5. You will be getting internal choices, right? I am sure you are aware of this also. You would have written your pre-boards. Now let us look at the chapter wise weightage. This again you would have gone through but I am just kind of uh, brushing it up. From sexual reproduction and flowering plants you have approximately 3 marks, human reproduction 8 marks, reproductive health 5 marks, principles of inheritance and variation 5 marks, molecular basis of inheritance 10, evolution 5, human health and disease 8 marks, microbes in human welfare 4, biotechnology principles and processes 8 marks. Biotechnology and its application and then organisms and population both have 4, 4 marks each. Ecosystem and then biodiversity and its conservation is 3, 3 marks each. 
if you look at the entire thing, your high weightage is molecular basis of inheritance, human reproduction, human health and disease and biotechnology principles and processes. So most of your marks come from these chapters. So you have a high number of MCQs coming from, from molecular basis of inheritance. You will have more number of questions asked from there. Prepare this chapter well. Pull out your old model question papers that is already present on the CBSE website. If you don't know what website it is, I will show it to you. So the website is CBSE Academic together, no space of course, CBSE Academic dot NIC dot IN oblique SQP underscore class 12th underscore uh, 20, 24. 25.html you don't have to put so much you just put cbse academic.nic.in okay it will still you can search for these uh, sample question papers and you can see with the marking scheme they have given it to you what you can uh, do is click on sample question paper of biology and it will open in this way all the questions are compulsory the question paper has five sections and 33 questions Section A has 16 questions of 1 mark, B has 5 questions of 2 marks, C has 7 questions of 3 mark, D has case based questions of 4 mark that is 2 question and E has 3 questions of 5 marks. So they have mentioned everything in the sample question paper and they have given you certain instructions as well. I don't know how many of you actually follow this. Look at the instruction what they are saying. There is no overall choice given. Whatever choice is given is internal choice, okay? In the sense, within the question, you will be asked to answer either the upper one or the lower one. In the sense, uh, within the question, I'll show you a sample later. Um, again, I'm sure you might have already gone through it. But there is no overall choice. You will get internal choice. So, you have to choose wisely. And only one of those you have to attempt. Don't sit and write all the answers just because you know it. That makes your paper very lengthy and it becomes tedious for the evaluator to correct. I know you fall, you fall. some of you might fall into that category who are scared. What if my first answer, in the sense first question's answer is better than the second one? I know both, but I can write the first one better. But then you get again a doubt. What if the evaluator likes the answer of the choice question that is there? So I'll write everything. Try not to do that. Be clear in your thoughts, whichever is the best in the sense as per you, you can pr produce the answer best for whichever question, write only that, don't write both. Because it will stretch your answer sheet to an extent where the evaluator might feel, oh my God, what is this? There are so many pages to correct, right? They are human beings at the end of the day. So, could happen, could not happen, but I don't think you should take risk. Wherever necessary, neat and properly labeled diagrams should be drawn. This also includes flow charts if possible. I'll give you an example. Like let's say they have asked you a long answer type of question on example I'm giving it to you. Long answer uh, type of question on let's say microbes in human welfare, sewage treatment plant. You can do a simple flow chart of sewage treatment plant. It can help you fetch more marks. Mm, um, Let's say they are asking you something about pollen grain. You can draw a small diagram of pollen grain. Or let's say they have asked you something about uh, embryo sac in flowering plants. You can very quickly draw an embryo sac. It wouldn't take you much time. So wherever possible, as much as possible, if you draw correct diagrams. Now don't be, uh, oh I have to draw a diagram, I'll draw a diagram. Even if I don't know, please don't do that. Then in that case, you end up making errors. Then the evaluator thinks that, oh, this child doesn't even know the diagram, but still the child has drawn it and drawn wrong. <laughs> so we don't want that kind of an impression on the evaluator. Remember, the evaluator doesn't know you. The one who's correcting your paper, for that person, you are just your answer sheet and your register number. So your entire impression comes from the answer sheet. I know it's a lot of pressure to be put on you, but it is not difficult. It's very easy. Make your paper neat, write it neatly. No ma'am, my handwriting is very bad. That's okay. Write in a way where your words are readable, legible. That's more than enough. Diagrams, ma'am, I can't draw well. My diagrams do not look well, no matter how much I try. 
that's fine nobody is expecting you to shade it give a proper outline make it beautiful no they all are looking for technically correct diagrams example when you're drawing embryo sac don't allow the cells to be flying in the air you have a border of the embryo sac let the antipodal cells attached to that border of you know the embryo sac that you have put don't let it fly uh, your polar nuclei should be in the correct position in the center um, synergy when you draw it should show filiform apparatus just don't put two rounds there uh, egg cell you have to draw uh, attached or touching the synergy this is what I mean when I say technically correct diagram so please do that and you are good to go next thing that you have to pay attention to now this is your sample question paper like i said you can go through that all right and one more very good thing beside this this they have also given you the marking scheme so how you write you will get marks for that suppose there's a two mark question on pyramid of energy is always upright give reason how would they want you to write and it is a two mark um, question example i'm telling you so you can see the lines should not ex uh, exceed these so if you have a two mark question try to put your answer in four lines ma'am five that's okay but then a two mark or a three mark question should not go as long as one page and a five mark question answer should not go as long as three page two pages where you have just gone on writing writ right so what am i saying written <laughs> gone on writing 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 uh, entire chapter you have summarized no please don't do that this is not language examination stick to the word limit that they are providing that is going to help you a lot now here uh, when they are giving you sections right naturally they will mention how many words you have to use so what you can do accordingly you can do the answering so internal choice when you say see question number 17 that is a or b you can choose one of the two and do your answering like i said stick to your word limit so that your paper is yet again more presentable your paper should not exceed your answer should not exceed a certain word limit that will help you fetch more marks so what are the things to remember one is the high weightage chapters that we summarized in the sense saw in reproduction unit it is human reproduction in genetics and human welfare it is molecular basis of inheritance in biology and human welfare it is human health and disease biotechnology it is principles and processes and if at all you want unit wise then in ecology it would be organism and population that is just four marks so i would rather stick to these chapters and the next thing that I said, told to you, write your answers in such a way that even if your handwriting is bad, your answer is readable. Attempt the most difficult section at the end so that you can build your confidence as you come to 2, 3, 4, 5 marks. And then when you come to section A, you are boosted and you are in a position where your brain is telling, it, telling to you, you have done so much, you can do better in section A, you will be able to answer it, right? So those 16 questions will be like drinking water. Uh, that you can leave right for the end next thing wherever possible draw diagrams put flow charts and <clears throat> make sure that you are writing within the word limit which i've already told you your diagrams need not be very beautiful and artistic it has to be neat and technically correct and labelings last thing a very silly thing i know it's a silly thing but mistakes in question numbers you shouldn't do if you do a mistake and if the evaluator is very kind enough they might overlook that and give you marks but you never know so let us not take uncalculated risks where we have no control i would suggest write the question number properly read the question put the question number properly the answer accordingly do not make mistakes don't write question number 17's answer and then put question number 18 because in that case they are actually supposed to cut marks so having said this giving you given you few insights i hope you will be able to do very well in your biology examination board examination all the best any further doubt you have you can let us know in the comments so that i can answer them and uh, thank you and keep studying